In our last video, we went over a unique method of building a dishwasher cabinet. If you missed it, check out the links in the description or the card at the end of the video. In today's video, we'll discuss what to expect during a granite countertop purchase and installation, as well as some of the reasons we ultimately chose granite countertops for our kitchen. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comments below. We started by Googling several granite retailers in the area, and we decided to go visit the largest place with the most variety first, just to see what the options were for the different kinds of stone. Once we found the kind of stone we liked, we called several other smaller places to see if they had similar slabs. This is a good strategy if you pick the common stone type and want to save some money. You have a better chance to negotiate the price down in a smaller place. Max tip. If you have a smaller kitchen like ours, try finding a place that will sell you granite by square foot instead of forcing you to pay for the entire slab. Most of the time, a standard undermount sink of your choice will be included in the price. But you want to confirm that's the case for your location. If not, you should definitely negotiate for it to be included. With the place and the slab all picked out, the shop will schedule an appointment to make the template for your cabinets. Max tip. If you're installing new cabinets, you want to make sure that they're completed, leveled, and ready for the measurements before you schedule the template appointment. Also, if you're providing your own sink for the installation, you want to have it on site for the appointment so it can be properly measured for the sink cutout. Once the template has been created, you will be invited back to select the exact section of the slab to be cut out for the final product. During this appointment, you will also select the style of the edges, finalize your sink choices, and determine final pricing for your entire project. Max tip. After you settle on the price, double check that there's no further discounts if you pay cash. Most of the time you can save 2-3% to because the business doesn't have to pay those pesky credit card fees. With all the major decisions out of the way, you will get a date for the installation of your countertops. Before the installers arrived, we needed to tie up some loose ends with our cabinets. What you're looking at is our clever solution for strengthening the inside corner of the cabinets. I'm not sure if it's necessary, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. We used some steel brackets we had on hand and cut some posts out of scrap wood, then secured them together with two inch screws and washers while the brackets were resting on the cabinet mounting rail. To level the supports with the cabinet, we used scraps of base molding that were exactly the right height to level the supports with the cabinet. Finally, before moving on to the outside corner, we used some shorter screws to secure the molding pieces from the bottom. The outside corner is made of two strips of cabinet filler panels that have been ripped to the desired width and secured to the cabinet on each side, and then to each other in the corner. The installers will arrive to your home with a very heavy slab of stone. So make sure you clear a path for them to the installation area. The installation procedure itself is very straightforward. The guys usually manually lift the slab and place it on the cabinets before sliding it into place. Luckily, ours fit like a glove. The second smaller piece of the countertop is then installed over the lone cabinet to the right of the stove. With all the countertops in place, they move down to the sink installation. Clear silicone is used at the top of the sink to seal the gap between the sink and the granite slab. To keep the sink in place while the undermount sink clamps are installed, they place a 2x4 over the sink opening and suspend the sink from it with a clamp. After the sink was installed, the head installer asked us where and how many additional holes we needed for the sink accessories other than the kitchen faucet. We only added one more hole for the soap dispenser, but you can add more holes for items such as water filters or pot fillers, just to name a few. They completed the project by cleaning up the area where they had drilled and applying a bead of white silicone around the perimeter of the cabinet to seal any gaps between the cabinet and the countertop. Finally, they sealed the stone with the granite sealer to prevent the porous surface from absorbing any spills onto the counter. This procedure should be repeated every 12 to 18 months. Keep in mind that the lighter colored stones must be resealed closer to the 12 month mark because they are more porous than the darker color stones. Let's check out the final product while I give you some thoughts on why we chose granite over all other options. Granite countertops are a long lasting and durable option. Due to their dense, hard stone and their resistance to scratches, chips, and cracks, they can withstand high temperatures and resist staining if properly sealed. With proper care, they can last for decades while maintaining their appearance. With a variety of colors and patterns available, they are a beautiful addition to any kitchen and can increase your home appeal to potential buyers in the future. This makes granite countertops unique. Each slab has its own swirl and a pattern, making it a one-of-a-kind addition to any kitchen. 
On a separate note, you may have noticed the stunning glass backsplash we installed. Keep an eye out for an upcoming video. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. Please leave your feedback or questions in the comments below. Like, subscribe, hit the bell to be there for the next one. Take care of yourself, your family, and have a great day.